again. It's good to be back with you. Um, I've had a question about how to calculate area moments of inertia using a negative area. And I think that's probably a pretty good uh, topic for a video, so here we go. Now I've laid out a T-shaped beam with a, a cap width of 60 millimeters, a web height of 60 millimeters, and then the width of both, or the thickness of both, is 20 millimeters. Now I want to start out by doing this using positive area, and then I'll do it using negative area to show you we get the same answer. So if you're going to find the area moment of inertia of anything, you need to know first where the centroid is. So we're going to start by finding centroid. And I'll, oops, find, there we go, y bar. And I'm going to measure y from right there. You can measure y from anywhere, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to start right there. Now I've got these boxes labeled 1 and 2. The uh, centroid of box 1, since it's rectangle, it's obviously in the middle of the box, is halfway up the, the width there. So that height right there for 1 is 70 millimeters. And for uh, box number 2, it's going to be 30 millimeters. So the definition of y bar is the summation of y bar for each of the boxes times the area of each of the boxes divided by the sums of the area. So that's it. That's all there is to it. I want to stay in frame here. So I'm going to write this out in one more step. So box number one, y bar is 70 millimeters, okay, times the area, which is 60 millimeters times 20 millimeters. Okay, that's box one. Okay, plus box two. That's going to be 30 millimeters. I'll get my out of your way here in a second. 30 millimeters is the, is the height of the centroid from there to there. And again, this is going to be 60 millimeters 20, times 20 millimeters, which is the area. Okay, and divide all that by the two areas, which are, by the way, 60 millimeters times 20 millimeters, 1200 millimeters squared. Um, so I'm just going to write 2 times 60 millimeters times 20 millimeters. Okay, there we go. Grind all that out on your calculator, and you're going to get 50 millimeters. Okay, that's the centroid height. So the centroid height for the entire box, or the entire beam, I should say, is right there. And I'll use that little symbol. That's the centroid of the whole uh, shape. I'm going to scooch this over. There's, there we go. So we, now we know that. Now we can figure out the area moments of inertia. I'm going to erase this here. The area moment of inertia is, okay, we're going to use the parallel axis theorem here. So y, uh, let's see, i total, area moment of inertia total, and where this is area moment of inertia calculated about the centroid is the sum of the, the area moments of inertia of each box plus the area of each box times the distance, here's the, this d squared term here, so it's going to mess you up, that, if anything's going to mess you up, that will. d is the distance from the centroid of the box to the centroid of the entire shape, and it's squared. Because it's squared, it doesn't really matter whether we call that distance positive or negative. This is one of the few times when you can uh, quit caring about signs. That's generally bad practice, but here you can get away with it. So, first thing I need to do is figure out the area moment of inertia of the two boxes. Well, let's see, I1 gives me 1 12th B H cubed. So that's 1 over 12 times the base. Okay, the base is 60 millimeters, and the height times the height cubed, which is uh, 20 millimeters. I'm going to cube that, okay, and I2 is going to be 1 over 12 bh cubed. Now this is, b and h are different, okay, so let's, let's, let's make, put some subscripts there so we uh, don't get confused, times now 20 millimeters times 60 millimeters cubed. So there you go. All right, so let's write our numbers out here. The first one up there, you would get 40,000 millimeters to the fourth. Okay, remember, um, units of area moment of inertia are length to the fourth power. It's one of the few times you're ever going to see fourth powers of length anywhere, which seems like a big number. But remember, millimeters really small, so that's actually not so big. And for 
the second box, you get 360,000. This is an awful lot bigger because that's taller and you're, you're taking the uh, height to the third power. So the last thing we got to do here is, is uh, take those numbers and put them into this sum. Okay, so I'm going to, for box one, I'm going to get, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll write this all out. 112BH1 cubed uh, plus A1D1 squared. Okay, A1D1 squared. Area 1, 1200 millimeters squared. We already know that. D1, now that's the distance between that point there, which is 70 millimeters up from our uh, reference line, and that point there, which is 50 millimeters up. So D1 is going to be 20 millimeters. D2 is also going to be 20 millimeters because it just turns out the centroid of box 2 is 20 millimeters below the centroid of the uh, whole shape. So do that. Again, 112B2H2 cubed plus A2D2 squared. Okay, remember, A times D times a distance squared, that's also going to give you distance to the fourth. Because I want to have some room on my little board here, I'm going to erase this stuff. Okay, so go back through. So we figured that out. That was 40,000, 360,000. Area is 1,200. That area is 1,200, and both the distances are 20 millimeters. Work that all out, and you get, make sure I do this right here. Okay, really? Uh, let's see. This is 840,000 millimeters to the fourth, plus 520,000 millimeters to the fourth. Okay? Add those all up, and you get 1.36 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. That's also 1.36 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the fourth. Okay? So we, now we've got the answer in using the standard positive area. Let's try this now doing negative area. I'm going to erase all this and we'll start over. Okay. So we know the right answer. Okay, I'm going to draw my big box here. This encompasses the whole T-beam. The T-beam is going to fit inside this. And it looks like that. Okay. With this being 60 millimeters on that face, and this being 80 over here. Okay, that's 60 times 20 or plus 20. And I've got these negative areas here. Okay, I'm actually going to be dealing with three boxes now instead of two. I have the overall one and then the, the two individual negative areas. I'm going to call this overall one number one, this number two, and this number three. So I total is going to be I1 now minus I2 minus I3. Those are negative. Oops. Those are negative areas, so I'm going to put a minus sign there. Now, I2 and I3 have the same area moments of inertia, and they also have the same distance from the centroid. So what I'm going to do here, just to try to keep the writing to a minimum, is I'm going to do that. Okay? If these two weren't the same, I, would, I would, couldn't make that simplification, but they are. Now, so I've got, I need to know I1. So that's 1 12th B1 H1 cubed, 1 over 12 times 60 millimeters times 80 millimeters cubed, and you get 2.56 times 10 to the 6th millimeters to the 4th. Okay? Now we already know I2 and I3 because those are, uh, we figured those out in the previous step. I won't do it again, so it's 360,000 millimeters to the 4th. All right, so all we got to do is bring it on home here. So I total, okay, is I1 plus A1D1 squared. And I'll tell you how we get that here in a second. Minus 2 times I2 plus A2D2 squared. Okay, now let's figure out what D is. A's are pretty obvious. The centroid of the entire box hasn't moved. It's still at 50 millimeters. Okay. The centroid of sorry, the centroid of the T beam. Centroid of the entire box is half of that. It's at 40 millimeters. So D1 is going to be 10 millimeters. Okay. 40 up to there. Okay. 
I'm not supposed to do dimensions inside a drawing, but I'm kind of, I don't want to have to move that. And now the centroid of these two different boxes, or of two and three, are still 30 millimeters above my reference line. Okay, so those, are, those haven't changed. The D2 equals D3. Okay, 50 millimeters there minus 30 millimeters there gives me 20 millimeters. All right, so I think I have all my numbers. And I guess the last thing I need is that area. Well, 60 times 80 is 4,800. So this is going to be 2.56 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th plus 4,800 square millimeters. Okay, 60 times 80 times... 10 millimeters, whoops, let's see if I can do this here, 10 millimeters squared, okay? That's box one, right? So all i got to do now is subtract 2 times the effect of box 2, minus 2, that's okay, I2, whoops, cheat sheet fell there, 360,000 millimeters, I'll get my head out of your way here in a second, and that's uh, millimeters to the fourth plus A2. Now that's uh, still 1,200 millimeters squared times 20 millimeters whole thing squared. There. Get, my, get out of your way here. So that's what the whole thing looks like. And if you work that out, you get exactly the same thing you got before. 1.36 times 10 to the 6 millimeters squared, and if you want to put that in uh, meters squared, it's 1.36 times 10 to the minus 6 meters meter squared, meters to the fourth, meters to the fourth, okay? So there you go. We just did a T-beam using positive and negative areas, and we got the same answer both ways. There you go. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.